Hey everybody, sorry I'm a little late. It's Allie's fault. Um, it, it, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you didn't need to take so long to set up, but yeah, it's my fault. Yeah, but now that I've figured out how I kind of want the setup to be, it's a little bit of a hodgepodge, but it's got the uh, the map over here. Well, not the map, the uh, PDF that I'm going to be using. Uh, I got the city summary page over here so I can take notes. Then I got the art page over on my other screen, and then I also have the dice roller. So everything is all nice and Oh, set you're up. actually showing them like what you're rolling? I figured you're just going to like roll dice. Roll the clicky clacks that you like. Well, I could, uh, but I mean, this this is something that I can do too. But anyway, um, so this is all because I'm uh, I set up the uh, city generator PDF that I made uh, for the DMs Guild. Uh, so you can find that over there. Um, there's a few links to it. I don't think they're on Twitch, but you can find them on my blog, which is. Dorkvision hyphen noble crumpet or noble crumpet hyphen dorkvision dot tumblr, um, or you can find it on the DMs Guild if you look up Chris Culbertson or Christopher Culbertson. Uh, there's a few ways to find it, but either way, um, I figured I'd be testing it out tonight uh, just so I can show you guys kind of how it works. So. This is it, the city generator, front page, DMs Guild logo, all that. There's a bunch of different aspects of the city that it goes over, and I kind of did them in an order that made sense to me. Um, but you can, like, if you guys are doing this on your own, you can do it in whatever order you want. Um, you can do just parts of it if you're just having trouble with some parts of it, uh, or you can just do the whole thing like I'm about to do. So, let's uh, get started, shall we? Um, Do it. And this is Allie. She's she's on the. I'm playing League of Legends. She's playing League of Legends, but she's I on the Discord just so I don't feel so bored and like lonely. Um, Aww, even though you're mad at me. Only because I'm late. Um, but if oh. you, if you want to chime in on the chat, I can also see the chat on my hodgepodge of a screen that I have here. Um, it just might take a second or two to like show up. But I brought us free food! You did. I'm not hungry, though. Mm. Free food for tomorrow! Exactly. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, my setting is the one that I'm doing for my Roll20 campaign, which I do stream on Sundays um, on this channel. Uh, the setting is a, um, a continent... Uh, area called Sargon, and it primarily revolves around the city where they kind of, the players kind of found themselves in, and just sort of stuck around there, and gravitated in and around that, uh, called Alore, the White City, uh, and it's like a half-elf city, perched on a cliff face overlooking the Scablands, which is a big desert that has once again bloomed, uh, after the defeat of a Lich. Um, so... Uh, there's a few regions that I have to deal with in this area, but I wanted to populate it with a few more cities so that players can go places instead of, like, the three capital cities um, and make it feel more alive. And this is probably an easy way to create some simple cities uh, out of pretty much nothing. So, uh, let's get started. There's a few... I want to see how bad of a train wreck this could be. <laughs> like, I want to see how good it could be, but I also want to see how how horribly messed up and dystopian this could, like, easily turn into. Well, I already did this once uh, on my own, and created a pretty funky town. Funky, um, like, painful? Or funky, like, oh, it's got, it's got some cute quirks. It's like, you know, it's... visiting some weird colonial cities. It's got some neat architecture, but there's definitely some underlying problems. It's a weird city that I made. Uh, it was called... Uh, I called it Urzark, and it's a half-orc town in the middle of the Scablands, and I sort of imagine it as Alore's quarry, because uh, Alore is made of stone, um, and it's like a very Greco-Roman sort of styled city, so they mine a lot of marble and stone. So this 
is the city where they get it from. They used to get it from somewhere else, but now they get it from there. Um, and uh, there's a lot on that on that city. I don't think I have it with me because uh, it's on a it's on a word document at work. But um, the why? Because that's where I keep all my stuff. Because I just do stuff at work instead of at home. I do like art at home. I I do my D and D work at. Oh, you should at least work. save it someplace so you can access it. Sometimes like... I save it to like, or I email it to myself. But I I need to get like, I need to bring my thumb drive to work. I think because I can't use Google Drive at work, which is what I used to solely do all of my planning on. Now I don't because <laughs> I can't access it. Uh, but I can still access YouTube and everything, the home brewery and all that. So a lot of my stuff I do on home brewery, which does save to, to the web. Um, so don't tell anyone. Anywho, let's, uh, let's start this. I, I would get into that other place, but we're going to do this place. Uh, but at least it kind of stalled a bit. Um, okay. So first map and layout. That's what I have Photoshop here for. Um, and I can show you like kind of what this means. So, uh, this is not only just like to describe the city and its location, but it's also to f help you physically map it out. Uh, that was the intent behind it, because I have trouble with that, like imagining a city layout that isn't just like a circle or like a square, a square or uh, an amorphous blob. Excuse me. Um, so I wanted to do that. Uh, key thing: it has to have a geographic feature. It might be an exciting geographic feature, or it might be a boring one. Uh, for instance, this city on the front, I did quickly roll up this city to uh, to help me figure out what I wanted to put on the cover. It ended up being a mud brick city, uh, and the geographic feature was an aquifer. So it's got these like irrigation ditches and stuff coming into and out of it. Uh, so, so yeah, it can get a little strange, but I think that strangeness makes it a bit better. Makes it unique. Anywho, we got a D100 for our first roll. Uh, there we go. 25. A dungeon. Okay, that's not strictly a geographic feature. <laughs> Notable features are always fun. Oh, hey, John. I have seen you from Tumblr. Hello, and welcome. So, right away... Uh, the geographic feature of this city is a dungeon. It's a little weird, but... Um, and it's kind of up to interpretation, because now I can sort of design a city and a dungeon. I don't know if I want to do that, but we will we will talk about it. So I'll, I'll just write that down here. Um, geographic feature... Uh, I would just use my... By the way, this is why I have this at the end of the document, the city summary. Uh, I don't have a printer here at home. Otherwise, I would just print out these two pages and I mean, write on them. I mean, okay. we do. We have a but giant... But it's the most inconvenient piece of crap ever. We have a 42-inch plotter that doesn't work. Uh, it works. Doesn't quite I, work. I just need to buy paper for it. That doesn't absorb the ink like a sponge. Does the ink? I thought the ink wasn't working too. No, no, the ink's fine. It was just the paper was god awful. It would just literally absorb it like a sponge, and it had this weird like surface to it, so it like destroyed the quality. Either way, we don't have yeah, a yeah. standard printer here. Yeah. Uh, and even if we did, I would have to print out this document, and then uh, I would have to like use a video camera to like stream it. So I'm just using a Google Doc for for ease of stuff. Oh, and there's the patrons. Thank you all, patrons. Uh, anywho. We'll get there. That's at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, so I might roll for another geographic feature in addition to this dungeon, but uh, we'll we'll see where it goes. For now, I'm just going to leave that there. Um, geographic integration. So uh, what this means is how the city is integrated with the terrain that I just rolled for. Uh, it's, again, it's a little weird because it's a dungeon, but it's just a simple d6 because it's random. Three, integrated. That's fine. That's kind of what I would have done anyway. So, it is integrated with the dungeon. Um, city is built 
into the geographic feature directly. It shows little signs of deformation as buildings and walls contour to the shape of the feature, in this case a dungeon. Um, conform it to the terrain to preserve the shapes of both the natural terrain and the city plan. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a city in a dungeon. Perhaps it's an abandoned dungeon, uh, something that used to be quote-unquote a dungeon and is now uh, populated as a city. Maybe dwarves live there. We'll think about that. Um, let's see, for my <laughs> dungeon integrated city, yeah, you just got to make a left or right, mine the gelatinous cube, and you're there. <laughs> All the gelatinous cubes. Out of curiosity, um, does this guide go into, like, into an extended form where it has the leaders of these cities as well, like say like a, a random generator to roll for like how much of a dick the you know the leaders are. There actually nice. there actually is. Okay. Uh, there's a government roller, and you can also roll for the government's temperament because I thought Wait. that was important. So could you have like a super awesome like oh man the city's like absolutely amazing and then the government's just a, a bag of, of poop. Yeah, uh, and cool. we'll get to the that when we get to it. Uh, <laughs> But this is interesting. I do wonder if I want to... I'll, I'll roll again on the geographic features to see maybe what the dungeon was built into. Uh, we don't have to follow this, but I'll just check. I mean, I like dungeon. It's kind of like Made in Abyss. Okay. Uh, city built on a dungeon. So it's a reef that I just rolled. So Made in Abyss. <laughs> hmm. There aren't really any water things nearby. Although I could warrant that this could be in the Underdark because there is an underground lake beneath Alore, which is the setting where I'm doing this. What there is nearby is there's a desert that used to be a thriving uh, fields and whatnot, and is now oh. a desert. I, were you going to say it's a, an ancient old reef that... Uh, yeah, it dried up. I, I had the head crossed my mind. The other option is a swamp um, that is nearby. There's also mountains nearby and a coniferous forest and a tundra to the south um so that's kind of what we have to work with uh i would show you the map but my screen's too stupid to show you so too many screens um so i'll just put like in parentheses reef and maybe i'll roll one more time just to get another option dead reef island okay well i think why you gotta think... be like this <laughs> In the middle of your desert, I think there needs to be an oasis. Cliff? Lori's on a cliff. Okay, well, let's let's stick with Reef. That's going to make an interesting dungeon. A Reef dungeon that's been dried up. So You can have, uh, oh crap, what are the sand sharks called? Bu Bouliet? Bu mm, Boulettes? Boulettes. Boulier, because it's two Ts. But yeah. <laughs> Well, that's not have... how you pronounce it in French. <laughs> Although, apparently, when that creature was made, uh, they were making fun of the French. So, the okay. <laughs> it was shaped like a... That creature is shaped like a bullet. So, uh, the designers called it a bullet. But then they were like, oh, it needs to look... It needs to sound fancy. Let's yeah. call it a boulet. boulet. So, they spelled it like that. But if you were actually speaking French, it would actually probably be spelled like bullet. Because... Yeah. An E-T-T-E -E is just a, an et, like baguette. Anywho, fun trivia aside, we're going to go move on to the city shape. So this is the overall shape of the map. Uh, we got a one. It's a circular one. Okay, well, we got a circular city. That's certainly a bit standard. Oh, cir circular. Um... Let's try and get a little more interesting as we go into zoning. Now, zoning is interesting. Uh, it, if you played like SimCity, this would be like your residential, industrial, uh, and commercial. But uh, here, uh, I kind of imagine it as either that or city districts. Um, so it can go either way, kind of. And I didn't, I don't know if I described that well here, but it's honestly just whatever you want it to be. So let's see how these districts are separated out. Grid zoning. Okay, so that's fairly easy. Uh, just put circular grid. Um, so the city districts are gridded out. Um, and it doesn't have to be exact, it doesn't have to be perfect, but relatively the districts are in a grid. There are some interesting ones here, like there's a regular zoning, which is whatever. Linear zoning would be if they were 
Actually, I have Photoshop. Zone it like Zootopia. So, I'll use Lay Photoshop to illustrate, pun intended, my point. Um, so, if you had a circular city, perfect. Uh, concentric zoning is the first one over there on the list. Oh, you probably can't see it because things in the way. Okay, we're on. Off screen. No, the dice roller was in front of it. Oh. Uh, Do you have like 3D dice up? Or is it just no, the No, it's just the D&D dice? dice roller. Oh, okay. So the district zoning. Uh, so if we had a circular city, and the first one is concentric zoning. That would be like your districts are separated out like concentric circles. Uh, like so. So like you could have one district on the outside, another district on the inside, and then one district in the center. This is best when you have like a uh, power center being one of your districts probably. So I realized you have a lot of... It's a very big thing we have here. 18 inches. Eh, let's shrink that. There we go. A bit more manageable size. Okay. Uh, next grid zoning. Easy peasy. Doot, 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 doot. It's a waffle. Um, irregular zoning could be irregular. Linear zoning. So this one's interesting as far as like a, a district's city would go. Uh, they would be separated out kind of like this uh, little gr gridiron uh, we got here. Cities, districts would be separated like this. You could walk from one side of the city to the other and go through several different districts. Or you could go through one district as you cross the entire city. It really depends. Radial zoning. Um, so this one's also a bit interesting. Also works good with a power center because your radial zoning is going to zone outward like so, like a pie slices. Uh, and as it expands, it would probably expand outward like so. Uh, and it's it's good because it lets all of these districts expand infinitely outward. Um, as opposed to, say, the grid one, which, if there's a district right here, they can't expand without, like, going, quote-unquote, colonizing some other distant area. Uh, so then, we got another types of things we got here. Uh, tiered zoning. How did I describe that? Uh, vertical fashion. Okay. So, yeah, uh, it doesn't need to be, like, tiers, like, steps. Uh... But it does need to be like if you have a, a vertical city. It's like Piltover in, in Zaun from League of Legends. Yeah. There's a city built on top of a city and there's different government and structure for like the further down it goes. Alternatively, Ravnica if you play Ravnica, Magic. Ravnica the Golgari, yeah. Because you yeah. got like the undercity would be the lowermost level. Then you got like maybe commercial people over here. And then in the upper echelon penthouses, you got like the nobility and whatnot. Um, so that's how tiered zoning would work. Uh, tessellated, it's, it's an irregular shape, but it's repeated. Um, and that's an actual thing that exists, apparently, because I did a lot of research looking into like these sort of things. Um, what city did you have to look up to find tessellation? Uh, I don't remember i think it's in new jersey but i think a lot of places in canada are built after this model it like has a name that's named after some nobody's name it's probably some weird thing for like political parties as well so what it is is like uh the example that was in real life um is like oh there's uh like a bunch of buildings or whatever and they're like surrounding a cul-de-sac and they all face inward like with their uh front their front doors all face inward into the courtyard so it's like forming this little zone um and it will have like a market a marketplace like on one corner or something and some form of production over here it was really weird but it formed like a weird shape are you thinking that kind of sounds like um it's like a little uh, like factory production kind of like villages that they had set up it's almost like that except they're okay. smaller um but <laughs> they're small okay you would just keep take that model and tessellate it outward and it was like tested in new jersey or some weird place in america uh and it was only used there and then canada 
took it on and used it for like an entire area. I don't know the exacts of it because I don't have it up and I'm not looking at it, but uh, you could probably find it if you looked up tessellated zoning laws or something. Uh, mixed zoning, you would mix those two together and, well, I'm not going to try and do that. Uh, but either who, we got a grid and it's circular, so it's a little interesting. Uh, city spread. So this is how the city spreads and like expands beyond its means. Um, so we're gonna do three downward spread. Okay, uh, it spreads downward, as in they dig down, which actually works really well for our dungeon. That's um, interesting. Um, again, Maiden Abyss. You're gonna Maiden say. Maiden Abyss. <laughs> uh, weird reef, giant dungeon, city on top of it, weird ruins. I'm imagining the top of this city is like. An elevator that just leads down into the into yeah. the rest of this place. And Made in Abyss has an elevator. Also, their structure is like as you go further down to go to this elevator to go down into the abyss, people get all like ratchety and gross and like they're like old. Well, that's it's not going like, to happen Hurr. here because that's already what's happening to you guys in the halls of Darganon. Yeah, well, everyone's crabby because it's just dark and full of acid water, and there's black dragons flying around bugging everybody. So, we got a few different ones here that I can just brief briefly go over. Uh, colonial spread. Instead of spreading out from the city, it just uh, they go out and create a colony somewhere else. Um, which would mean that the city roughly stays in place. Um, whereas they spread outward that way. Directional spread. It spreads in one direction. Uh, so, if you have the city here. Uh, the city where my campaign is currently taking place is in Alore. They have a cliff over here, so they can only technically spread like outward this way. You're they can't. A cliff. They can't spread out this way. So that's. <laughs> Expread. Well, sorry, I'm trying to like <laughs> sorry. listen to you quip about me saying s s cliff. You wanted me to be here. This is all of your decision making. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, I already explained downward spread, and we got fingered spread. Nothing to say about fingered? No. Okay. Uh, so that would be, they kind of spread out in little fingers. So the city will immature. spread out kind of like that as they continue to spread. Um, there's almost no reason for that. It just makes a more interesting shape. Geographic spread, it expands along its geography, which would, again, be that city of Alori that I was just drawing. Um plan spread, it continues its city planning, whatever it is, uh, and spreads out that way. So for instance, our circular grid city would continue to expand in a circular grid. It would continue to plop on little grids onto its circle. Um, shaped, it expands in the form of a distinct shape, perhaps different than the original overall shape. So I could roll again, uh, and maybe it's a circular city that expands in a star shape. We don't know. Uh, upward spread, opposite of downward spread, they just build up. That is, again, Ravnica. Um, okay, so we have generally how our city should look. Before I draw anything, though, I kind of want to learn a bit more about it. Um, so we're going to move on to population, which is the next thing. It's kind of how big is your city. Uh, and then there's some options for rolling up demographics, which I left very open and vague. Uh, one, so I don't have to limit people to D&D uh, &D specific races and species and religions and all that. Uh, and two, so I don't need to step on any like toes with that sort of talk. Um, so anyway, population. Uh, so in this, what I really like about this generator I made is that there's uh, often a weighted option and a random option. The completely random option will roll something completely random on the table. It's perfectly evenly spread out. The weighted option favors something, uh, so it's more of a bell curve. In this case, it favors, what did I say it favored? Uh, small and large towns. Uh, so it's sort of in the middle, if you're make, like making a city. It's rarer that you'll see a metropolis, it's rarer that you'll just find a thorpe or a hamlet. Uh, so I'm going to do the weighted option for this one. 10. Small town. See? 
Easy peasy. So this is a small town, and that's kind of what I wanted to have here anyway. Um, because it's not meant to be like a capital city or anything here. Um, so demographic presence, well, this is uh, the very vaguest part of the guide because it's more of a tool than an actual thing. It's basically how to do averages, uh, but you can also roll randomly to see how prevalent something is. Excuse me. Uh, then we got species and race distribution. A differentiate between that. Uh, species is like elf and dwarf. Race is like hill dwarf or high elf or dark elf. Uh, that sort of thing. Um, so we have an unbalanced distribution, an integrated distribution, and a balanced distribution. Balanced is like totally, there's no like majority or minority. Unbalanced is the other spectrum where there's an overwhelming majority of something and an overwhelming minority of something. Integrated is somewhere in between where you could still say like, oh, this is an elf city, but there's uh, a whole bunch of other races popping up there as well. Um, a whole bunch of other species. Uh, so, uh, it could create some sort of cultural tension. Let's see if there is any before we get any further. So it's a balanced one. Okay, that's fair. It's a dungeon. I mean, nobody really cares about anything if you're if you're in a dungeon your entire life. Um, so we got a small town. Uh, balanced uh, species and race. Um, Sorry. Distribution. Okay, uh, so I don't have a roller in here for the specific races and species, mainly because I don't want to limit people to what is in their, um, their setting. Uh, so you could do this for a different setting, like not necessarily even D&D, you could do this for a Ravnica setting, but you could use your own tables and stuff to do that. But that's what or, the demographic yeah. presence... Uh, thing is for. And I'll show you... Even if you have your own you... homebrew, you can just write down everything and then... Yeah, you can... Yeah. If you want to roll randomly for the races, you can do that. Whatever. But do that on your own. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to do that. It's too much work. <laughs> I don't need to hold your hand to roll up a random race in class. Um, there's plenty of those already. New Isekai coming to Netflix in 2020. Huh? What? Huh? John John Soki just chatting. Isekai. It out. Yeah. Uh okay, so Man, there's there's no list of uh of just the races. Oh, I can check the table of contents. Easy peasy. I mean, Sorry, I'm flipping like, through the book. There's like pages in the front that say like the race. The, I I know, but I wanted it on a list so I didn't have to keep flipping. Okay, we got I'm just going to use the standard array. Uh, in this case, because it's like in a dungeon, I think I'll include the the stranger races, the ones that are supposed to be, quote-unquote, more rare, um, like Dragonborn and Tieflings, uh, which are the only two, really. I could expand it out to all the other races, but I don't have a list of all the other races. So one, two, three... Actually, I kind of want to. So... I'm going to go look up list of all list of D&D 5e races. Okay. Uh Wikipedia. Though it is tempting. Listen I'm sure tables. it's on DM's Guild. Or sorry, not DM's Guild. Um D&D Beyond. Okay, this has all of them including the sub races. <laughs> That's interesting. That's cool. Wait, like sub races for like it also the... has the expanded content because there's Vidalkin right there. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, there's definitely more than 20 there. Uh, I'll just roll a d20 just in case. One, two. I'll do one, two, th three, <laughs> four, five, six, seven, eight. A lot of elves, huh? 
nine, ten. Okay, so ten got me. Ten ignoring uh, Etherborn and ignoring the sub races. Ten got me a Genasi. So this is a Genasi city. That's interesting. That's really cool. I'm glad I I'm glad I did that. Huh. Hmm. So we we got a Genasi city. Uh or who else is here? Uh so, uh I'll just I'll I'll do some of the standard races uh and add them to this baby. Uh maybe what it is it's like based off of I don't know if there's technically like a little D10 for a race. no. Never mind. I was gonna say there's like a rarity almost to like different types of characters and like which ones are more popular, but that's more of a a meta thing amongst like the players, not the actual campaign. So I'm rolling for additional ones, and you are right. That's again why I didn't really include it. Five. Okay, we got Genasi. It's a Genasi city, but it's also got half elves, dragonborn. Ooh. And I'll do two more. Tiefling. Interesting. It's like a city of outcasts. Well, what kind of... Wait, what kind of um, distribution did you roll? I'm going to get to that. Oh. Well, the the okay. distribution is balanced. Um, okay. I'm going to get to so the demographic. So you can just roll as many as you want and it's balanced. I figured if there was something like in your in your charts that says, oh, well, you know, it's not very diverse, then you would roll less of these yeah. kind of thing. Um, in the case of the other city that I did um, on my own, it was a unbalanced uh, distribution. So I rolled two random races and got half orcs and gnomes. So there's a large half orc population there, um, but there's also a, there's one district that has a bunch of gnomes in it. So it's like a gnome district. And I got to that later, because um, one of the districts that I rolled was a species or race district. So that district is confined to uh, a sp majority of one species or race. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. Well, there's a minority of gnomes here, so I can just put all the gnomes in one district. And it turned out that I connected dots later in the history and uh, weird landmarks and stuff. There's also a magical landmark <laughs> in that district. So I was like, huh, let's say the gnomes are there and they created this district to study this magical landmark anomaly. Uh, so I put a magic hoodoo in, in the city that affects gravity. So that's what that city is, but back to this city. I'm getting ahead of myself. Mm -hmm. So demographic presence, I'm going to show you real quick how this works so we can figure out the generic integration of these creatures. So we're going to assume that Genasi, since it's a Genasi city, uh, actually it's balanced. Uh, so we, we, it doesn't necessarily need to have a high prevalence. Um, I just kind of rolled that first. Uh, so let's see. Let's just roll d8 uh, for the demographic presence. So we got 7 and 8. I don't want Genasis to be a rare presence, so we'll say half elves are a rare presence. Yeah. Uh, I'm expecting D8. a very elemental kind of city now. We have a 10 on the Dragonborn. Uh, we have a 10 on Tieflings. So these are both average. 7. Got dwarves as being rare. Uh, I'm going to just roll a d4 for these guys. Okay, so Genasi are high prevalence. It was either high or average that I wanted. Okay, so we got a interesting spread here. Um, I kind of want there to be more dwarves. More. So I'm going to put that at five, and we'll say half elves are one. Uh, okay, so how this works. Uh, basically, <laughs> You just add these together and then divide it by their density value, aka the number, and get their percentage presence in the city, which is just averages. That's how you do averages. Uh, but I had to spell it out for the text, and for people that didn't know how to do that, or people that maybe didn't think to do that. Uh, hmm. 
So we got. Or they're just lazy. Or they're just lazy. Well, they I'm can't be lazy. too lazy because they got to do this. Yeah, yeah. DMs. DMs are not lazy. So we have a total of fifty-one. The half elves sort of threw off my nice even numbers. Um, so we got fifty-one. So we can pretty easily just go find these. Uh, so we got tieflings are going to be roughly half. 49% 49% tieflings uh, then we got half elves which are going to be negligible probably uh, yeah they're 2% skim half elves no 2% is 2% skims underneath it oh okay I don't know anything about milk I, so I don't yeah sorry milk. you don't drink milk Okay, and we got about 20% for Dragonborn, and it's going to be the same for Tieflings, because they have the same value. I mean, it, it's not a perfect system, but it gives you some easy numbers to help you work with. Uh, and I rounded all of these up, so they might be, they might be bad once I add up all the numbers. Uh, then we got 10% Dwarves. I guess I could have done that math in my head. Okay, uh, so we got, yeah, we're we're a little over on the half elves, so I'll just uh, I'll just tilt down tieflings a bit because they're a bit more unusual than dragonborn, to be honest. Um, no offense, Mal. Okay, mm. so I was distracted by a cat that was cosplayed as the Sailor Moon character. It was adorable. <laughs> Is it the cat? It, it's it's the cat. It's got a little yeah, it's got a little moon thing on its head. It was adorable. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, uh, we got the, the Genasi city. Roughly 49% of the population are Genasis. 2% are half elves. 20% dragonborn. 20 or 19% tieflings, because I tilted it a bit. And then 10% dwarves. Uh, easy peasy. Um, so now, when I find the population, it's a small town. So, the small town is between 900 and 2,000 people. Uh, so we could say like it's 1,500. So you could technically put these percents to that number and find out exactly how many of each species or race is in your city. And like I said, this is just a demographic table. And demographic can be can mean anything. For instance, if you have a certain number of people that uh, worship Hieronius in your city uh, versus a bunch of people that are in a cult of Vecna, maybe that's a rare presence or prevalence, um, then you could like roll for the different people that worship different religions in the city or people that are unaffiliated. Um, what else do I have in here that you could do that for? Social class, wealth distribution, uh, cultures, because you could have different cultures within the same city. Uh, professions, if you want to like eke out how many people are bakers in the city. Uh, character classes, if you wanted to figure out how many people are barbarians in the city. Uh, so you could assign these values to everybody and find out that percentage easily enough. And that's kind of how that works and what's that's for, what that is for. Uh, so let's move on from that. Um, we're, we're st I, I know I haven't drawn anything on the Photoshop yet, but that's because I kind of want to get a much better idea of the city because we're already finding out that there's Genasi here. Uh, I know, like I want to draw right now, and I'm just like, but I don't want to stream. <laughs> um, I also need to go make tea. Oh, that's fine. I okay. can talk. I can apparently talk. It just takes me a bit to get talking. Yeah, and and as long as I'm here, then it's like you're talking to someone, even if no one else is listening. Exactly. Okay, so next <laughs> we move on to a part that's not a random roller. Uh, and I'll probably, I would honestly do this one last, and it's kind of how I end up doing it. Uh, so, uh, we got people and rumors. I'll just make this list out here so I can fill out my own, or create my own summary as I explain it. So, we got, for people, uh, this is generally so that you as a DM, or game master, whatever, um, so that you can have a list of people that you can immediately go look at uh, and tell your players names and tell your players like oh yeah these are people in the city uh, so name three to five NPCs that can be met in the city whenever the players decide to talk to somebody so this is like the players go 
I want to, I want to ask somebody what, what, what's the, what's the sitch? I want to talk to somebody in the tavern. Uh, I want to grab somebody on the street. Um, you just want some NPCs that live here, uh, so you can get people that have like, that are these races that I've rolled, or are these classes that I've decided live here, or professions. Um, so you want to get just three to five generic NPCs that can be met anywhere. Then you want three to five shopkeepers. Because uh, players are inevitably, whether they have money or not, going to go shopping. It's tried and true. People will say, I got 5,000 gold pieces. I'm a rich man. I can go buy whatever I want. Mm -hmm. Not so. Magic items are expensive. But other stuff might not be. And honestly, I can sometimes find mundane shops to be even more interesting. Uh, so you can roll these up. Um, it, it's possible to roll these up, rather. Um, so there are things later in the uh, economy section. Uh, so there are commodities and products that you can roll for. They're meant to be imports and exports. Exports? Exports. Um, they're meant to be imports and exports. Uh, but you can just roll on these to see what the shopkeeper might be a vendor of. Uh, so I could do that. The other thing I can do is there are guilds. There's a guilds thing, and the guilds isn't even, like, something that you need to do. It's just an option for if one of your factions is a guild. Uh, but if you need a random shopkeeper, these are all pretty much professions in the city, not necessarily shopkeepers. Uh, so I'll... I'll roll two of these, and then I'll roll, like, one product and one commodity, or two commodities. So let's do that. Uh, let's do a D100. Eh, 52. Innkeeper. Okay, well, that's coming later, so let's re-roll. Uh, Chandler. Just like friends. I mean, a candle maker. No, thank you. I could use some more water, though, since you're up and I'm attached to this headset. Thank you. I love you. Okay. Uh, 97. Wheelwright. It's more of a profession. You wouldn't really go buy wheels. You'd go get wheels fixed. Uh, surgeon. Hmm. Scribe. It's also kind of a service. 87. A surgeon again. It's trying to tell me something. What? I'm just rolling repeatedly. No. A uh, lawyer. Man, I'm not getting any shopkeepers on this guild's list. Carpenter. Unfair. It's fair. Unfair. That's, that's kind of where Sweeney Todd comes in. Yep. I don't know if they can hear you, by the way. Um, okay, let's roll... Uh, let's do one commodity. So we got... Paper. Huh, we got a paper maker. Put paper seller. Uh, then we'll do two products, because products are more likely to be something that's sold. What do you mean, ooh? But I, I didn't go with lawyer. I was just... I was rolling for shopkeepers and I got lawyer, so I re-rolled. Um... What did I just roll? 37. Uh, furniture. Okay. Furniture salesman. So what else? 71... Metal work. Metal worker. Okay. Just put these in an unordered list. Easy peasy. Meta worker. There's an L there. Okay. Uh, go back to what we were doing before. Da -da -da. Okay, shopkeepers. Then we need to name three tavern keepers or innkeepers. Um, 
another thing that this list probably is lacking is random tavern and inn names. But there's there's so many of those. I didn't need to throw mine out into the middle of the empty void where people are putting uh, colors and verbs onto animals and people uh, to create tavern names, so you can go find one. Excuse me. Um, I only put three, because there's probably going to be like... Um, oh, I even listed that here. Uh, create one high-class place, one seedy place, and one place where adventurers convene. Uh, so there's your three taverns for the three types of people that you have um, in your campaign. Uh, for instance, your group is a bunch of shady people. They go to the shady tavern to do illicit business. Uh, your group is a bunch of magicians and noble people. They will go to the high, pla high class place. Uh, if your group is just a bunch of heroes and adventurers that just want to come, like, throw back a beer or whatever, they go where the adventurers go. So there's your three different sort of taverns. Three taverns. And then three important NPCs that everybody knows. So that's the last of the people, but um, what I mean by this is if you ask anybody in the city, they will probably know this character. For instance, the government leader is probably one of them. Uh, a hero to the city that saved them on, a, on an occasion, um, a religious leader or something. These are important people that are most likely important to the plotline, or at least important to your city. Um, so we got three important NPCs. Uh, then we got rumors. Rumors are mostly just to drive people, uh, drive the players to where you want them to go. So you want three rumors, and I say three because I keep saying three uh, because of the rule of threes, in which your players are always going to miss, like, two-thirds of whatever you throw out at them. Uh, you need at least three clues if they're going to solve the mystery, because they need to find at least one of those uh, <laughs> things. So, uh, you need three rumors that lead towards the main plot, whatever that might be for you. Um, three main plot and then we got three rumors that lead to side quests, and those can be whatever you want. Uh, if players want to just do shenanigans in the city, side quests will help players explore the city and sort of get acquainted with it. Even if it's just like deliver this across the city to the in this district, then they'll they'll kind of get accustomed to it as they go ask around where that district is, talk to people from that district, uh, explore it, and then three rumors that lead to key locations or people in the city. For instance, those three important NPCs earlier, or three perhaps landmarks in the district. Um, three key locale and people. So again, I'm not going to go over these really, because uh, these aren't, these are more specific story oriented stuff and uh, I've already spent an hour and a half just doing this stuff. You can see how it could take a while for you to do it, but I'm also doing a lot of explaining while I'm doing this stuff. Ideally, you would probably just go through, roll a bunch of stuff, make a bunch of decisions, and then look over it all once you're done. Um, so, uh, and again, you'd probably do this part last, the people in rumors, because uh, the next part is history. I wanted this to be pretty early in the guide, but it also requires you to know how old your city is and how big your city is. Um, and it, they're non-specific historical things that we're going through. So, how this works, uh, we roll for the city's age. Whoops, what did I just do there? Stupid PDF thing. Oh, I highlighted it. How do I not do that? Oh well. It's highlighted now. Uh, okay. So, we're gonna do city age. Uh, we'll do... It's a dungeon, so it's probably going to be pretty old anyway, so I'm going to probably re-roll if I get a really low number. I'm going to do the weighted option, I think. So that's a four. Uh, if, at max 50 years old, a very young city. Eh, well... Hmm. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good... 
I know they can't hear you, but either way, um, it, it could be a very young city because they just were created like after the dungeon was defeated or something. So let's, let's go with it's a very young city, which honestly means it's probably not going to have much of a history. Um, <laughs> moreover that than the fact that it's just a fucking dungeon. It's not how it works, Allie. Allie, that's not how it works. I'm trying to explain my guide. And you're off, like, off of the mic so nobody can hear you. Well, then stop talking. But we can hear you. Well, they might be able to hear you. But either way, one side of conversation. So, history. It's a very young city. So, the dungeon was probably just recently cleared out. Uh, we'll go towards the... No, we'll just roll a d4. Two. So two after eleven. We'll say it's a thirty-year-old city. Very young babby city. Uh, so, historic events. There's probably going to be none. Because uh, it's a very young city. Um, we... We basically roll a d20. And we subtract twenty from the result. And that's how many events that we have happened in our city. A 1 or a 20 is a crit or a fail. Uh, a 1 meaning that there's uh, no important events in its history. And a 20 meaning that there cannot be less than one important event in the history. Um, so based on the age, uh, it's a very young city, so we only have plus 1. And since we're minusing 20, we need to get a 20 to actually get something. It's a small, it's not a small city actually, it's a uh, small town, so we also don't get a modifier there. So it's not a very exciting roll. We got a 9, it's plus 1, 10, minus 20, there's negative 10 events in the city. So yeah, uh, the, nothing really happened in this city. Um, so I'm going to use a different example, uh, which makes sense. Um, it's a very young city. It's only 30 years old. Nothing of great import has happened in this city. People probably haven't even heard of the damn city. Um, but if we were to use like a mature city, uh, which is between 100 and 400 years old, aka like American cities, um, versus these other ones that are like old, very old, ancient and primeval. Um, so we got a mature city has like a plus five. If it's a small city, that'd be another plus five, so we're adding 10 to this roll. So let's try again. We got an 18, plus 10, 28, minus 20, 8. We would roll for eight different historical events. And these are the historical events. It's a D100 roll with 100 different options. Please, yes. Uh, so I'll roll for this uh, for the sake of um, I want to. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I want to show want you to some of these, these well. things. Uh, maybe I'll apply some of them to this city, even though it doesn't technically have them. But I will list them out, and let's do them in chronological order. Uh, okay. So, D100. 36. What happened first? What happened first in this thing's city? The city begins a new trade route. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, they went from trading nothing to trading things. Um, I feel like this city was, like, it miraculously just kind of came into being. Which makes sense, considering the whole desert thing and stuff, yeah. <laughs> um, so I just rolled a three for the next one. Cultural revolution changes the art style of the city. Huh. Uh, hmm. cultural revolution. There are other revolutions in, in here that aren't just cultural, but uh, that one changed the art style of the city. I guess we'll get to that soon. Um, 65. City embargoes goods from a nearby city. They just I... started trading! <laughs> and they're like, screw you. This is ours now. You can't have it. It's not allowed. It's all ours. I yeah, think they all just started turning into they, dragons. They just like started trading and then were like, we don't like this. 
This is bad. Wait, wait, wait. Maybe, maybe it's because of like the cultural revolution change. They they used all of their own product, so they're like, no, nah, man, this is like important to us. We gotta like keep preserve it our here. dungeons history, yeah. man. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we got twenty eight for the next one. Evil overlord forces the city to pay fealty to them. Guess someone took over the dungeon. Uh, I mean, I bet you he, this person started the city embargo. Well, the embargo happened first. Oh, so right, they, right, true. That, they it's, could it's have. Timeline. They could have, but I'm trying to do these in roughly chronological order. Sorry. 65. Another embargo? Wow. Yeah, no, this guy's definitely the. Uh, yeah, he started it. It's all him. <laughs> or, or them. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, 24. Snowstorm buries the city. How? Uh, Ice Dragon? Maybe that's the evil overlord? I can buy that. Maybe they uncovered it within the the dungeon. Who knows? 100. Volcano erupts near the city. Oh, no. I think... All right. This is a very wealthy hole in the ground. Two dragons just came out of nowhere to take it over. <sighs> this is interesting. I'm mad. I like your two dragons idea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'm also like, uh, there's Genasi living here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Perhaps there are genies fighting over this dungeon for some arbitrary genie reason. Um, and there's a subterranean volcano and a subterranean, like, snowstorm that uh, was created the by these people. Um, it's probably not that big uh, as far as Maiden Abyss goes. We got one more event. 71. Uh, city sends an invading force to a nearby city. <laughs> Interesting. This is ours now. Wait, that's ours too. I'm gonna say this is the history of the dungeon. The city itself happened after this. So if the city, if the dungeon, quote unquote, invaded another city, um, perhaps it defeated the evil overlord that was trying to take over, and another elemental genie uh, rose to power and is now, or at least was, the founder of the city. I think that sounds good. Yeah. So you can already see like how this city generator just helps create ideas. The the event these historical events will already spark things. Now these are all very vague, but we still have some cool ideas going with them already. So let's continue on down the list. Uh, culture. This is another important part of the city, and eventually it'll get to architecture, which is where the mapping might start coming in. Um, so, city symbols. So we got origins and colors. Uh, two simple d12 rolls. Let's go do them. One and five. It's an animal or monster, and it is orange. Uh, cool. Uh, so it's an orange monster or animal. What should that be? I don't know. Mm. Orange is like the worst color. I know it is. Wait, you don't like a orange either? It's a weird color. I don't know. I'm just not a fan of orange. Yellow, I think, like I'm okay with yellow, but orange is just like, mm. I like greens. Yeah. But, but I also like red orange so we got our shitty orange color um <laughs> and a monster not sure what monster or animal Ooh, john said a rust monster rust monster they're orangish yeah I agree. they they are orange but it doesn't have to be orange like we could have an orange color like swan or something this okay. is just the color of the symbol although <laughs> Maybe I can just roll for a random... Mo I'll just... Flip. What happened to that, that weird tavern generator that you said you didn't want to make with weird colors and animals and adjectives? Gee, that would be really helpful right now. Well, again, this is just to spur creativity, because if I did that, I'd have to also roll for... or create tables for art objects. I, I'm, I'm being facetious. It's just the fact that we both are, like, orange, and then our brains have just completely shut off. They've gone comatose. Orange. Ooh. Well, you know, since it's orange, I think we can assume 
that whoever caused that volcanic eruption to erupt won this battle. And maybe they have a fiery sort of symbol for their uh, Can it be a city. salamander? Yeah, it can be a salamander. I think salamanders are adorable. That's the first thing that came to mind when I thought of orange. Ah, you're thinking that salamander. Those ones are red. No. Mm. I'm not thinking of the fire one either. I'm thinking the fire one. No. Let's do a fire snake. Okay. I was just thinking of the adorable little salamanders that you find underneath the logs in the middle of woods. Uh, nope, it's an orange fire snake. Uh, which is no. a young salamander. D&D yeah. salamander. Language. Uh, so we have linguistics here. This kind of... It's semi-optional uh, in my head, but basically it's how hard is it for the players to communicate with people in this city. And there's a rare chance that there's a forgotten language in the city. There could be a dialect in the city that makes it a bit hard to communicate. Multilingual... Uh, many different languages are spoken monolingual would be like oh everyone here speaks dwarven you have to speak dwarvish or nobody understands you bilingual is like two languages obviously primary and secondary there's two languages but one is the main language and not everybody speaks the secondary language it would be like spanish in america uh or french in canada um although i think it might be just in certain regions of canada anywho Let's do the weighted option. I'm really weird thinking about that now. Is English primary or is French primary? Uh, I, I think that in the I think it Quebec depends on where place, you are. Yeah. it's like French is the primary. Yeah, yeah, and then English would be secondary. Not everybody speaks English. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I rolled a twelve, which is a monolingual dialect. Interesting. Uh, and we do have some random languages here. I did do this, even though I didn't do like the races and stuff, because there are some specific. Uh, languages in D&D, &D. and I left out the weird ones, except for Draconic and Undercommon. What about Terran? I left out the weird ones. Why? Because mostly people wouldn't use that as their primary language oh. because it's physically hard to speak some of those languages. Right, unless you are of... of like, like, Terran requires you to, like, gargle have... gravel to <laughs> speak have it. Have stones for teeth, yes. Uh... But Draconic, there's Dragonborn, there's Kobolds, there's Lizardfolk, those can all speak Draconic. Undercommon is just anybody in the Underdark could speak Undercommon, so I plopped those two in here. Uh, let's do a completely random option, though. Uh, eight. Halfling. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if they should all speak Halfling. I'll... Are there any Halflings? No. <laughs> huh. Uh, Maybe it's like a joke. Maybe I'll just roll a D. Hmm. I don't know. This is, this is a snag here. I'll just roll again. Because I don't like that result. I got halfling again. <laughs> <laughs> I got halfling again. I think. Are you kidding me? I think there's a problem. I, I just rolled one, two, three, four. Five, five eights in a row, and then rolled a one, and then rolled another eight. I wait, wait, hold on. What, what, what is the roll? Is it a D100? It's a D10. Okay. <laughs> I got a one. Yeah, well, I finally got a one, which is common. Let's let's do common. Let's get out of this crazy nonsense. Uh, so it's a common dialect. Wow, how common. Um... So, what did I say that the dialect does? It makes it a bit difficult for non-native speakers to understand. Creatures must make a DC-12 intelligence check to understand a creature if the city's language is not their first language. So, if you speak common, which all people do, um, then, uh, yeah. Uh, we could say that this is just, uh, it's, it's just kind of hard to understand people. Like, if someone from the north went into the deep south and heard somebody talking, they'd be like, uh, can you repeat that? Uh, that's generally how it'll be in this city, I think. So, now we go on to some fun stuff. Food in the city. Uh, this is mostly for role-playing stuff. Uh, as far as, like, players are going to go to the city. What are they going to do at the tavern? They're going to order something to eat. 
You aren't just gonna Please give don't them. Don't let it be stew. It's always stew. You aren't just gonna give them a leg of mutton and a flagon of mead. Um, let's let's roll for a local ingredient and a key flavor and s try and combine them. Okay, I rolled a d10 and didn't get an eight. That's a good sign. Confectionery. So we got like a dessert or a sweet that is the local sort of specialty here. Uh, d20 for the flavor. 19, it's sweet. Okay, well, that's not totally interesting, but I guess they like their sweets. Food, sweet desserts. People partying down here. Okay, dress. Uh, how do people dress down here? What is the city known for? Got another 8, but this time I'm on a d12, so I'm not mad. Uh, neckwear. Okay, so the city has a deal with neckwear. Now this could be a necklace, this could be a choker, this could be a pectoral, this could be um, a collar. We don't know, but it could be whatever we want. Since they're genasis, I'm gonna go with uh, probably some sort of like elaborate necklace of some sort. Maybe pectorals, because genasis like to show off their striations that are on their body. Um, I believe. <laughs> I think that's uh, how it's worded. But uh, so they would probably like go like less uh, less clothing on their bodies in general. So they would probably have like a big pectoral or something um, just hanging around their neck and not much else. Maybe like a few strips I'm fine of with cloth. That. I'm extra fine with that. So we'll say like elaborate pectorals. Uh, I kind of imagine um, Link when he had to wear like the the woman's outfit. I forget what the name of the tribe was, but he had to like disguise himself as a woman to get in. And it's sort of like, yeah, it was just like a single piece like around his chest. Yeah, kind of. It's it's kind of it's kind of like that. Especially if there's apparently a volcano and a snowstorm nearby, people need to not be totally. Uh... <laughs> mm. If know. they wish to be free and have their tatas hang out, let them be. <laughs> okay, so next we got architecture. So this is where we can start getting to the building part. Um, so I have a lot of different tables for architecture because I think it helps to know this is about the city. What does the city physically look like? Uh, less so caring about dress and food um, and the symbol and all that. What are we actually dealing with? So let's do a building material. Four, earth and mud brick. Again, I got that with the front cover one. Uh, let's put architecture in its own thing. I mean, it's it's pretty common. It's a common thing. You can make it look really pretty. Yeah. Um, you could fire it and turn it into tile. And honestly, that's probably what they would do in this place if it's uh, if the fire people won this evil overlord conflict that we're apparently talking about. Alright, I'm imagining it as like Moroccan style, like ornate sort of tile work. So like It's no longer just mud, it's like tile. Beautiful. So I have a character in my main city of Alore. I feel like this is where they're from. Uh, they're, the character is called Smolder. Nuh-uh. I guess I, I can see her from here. Uh, she is a smoke genasi. So she is made of primarily smoke with billowing like uh, smoke you coming out of the top of her. of her head. I do have it. I don't know where it is. I'm not going to look for it. Uh, and then she's got like glowing orange eyes and uh, striations along her body. She's covered in like elaborate like jewelry and whatnot and then has just a simple cloth uh, like I, I guess you'd I don't know what you'd call that sort of outfit where it just kind of it's like a toga, kind of. It's like a toga, it's I guess. very loose. and just then hangs sort of... from a thing around the neck and then drapes uh, and, over and then your torso. The waist. And then tied around the waist. Oh, it's, um, yeah, it's basically a toga. It's it's a style of dress that they used to wear, that the women would wear in Greece, if I remember correctly. I don't know. It's like a backless top. Yeah, uh, it's like a, a linen, simple linen dress. But yeah. This is probably where she's from, to be honest, since I didn't know there was a Genasi city nearby. I just said she was from, like, New Dawn, but, uh... I feel like I'm getting spoilers. 
Are you actually going to put the city in our campaign? Yeah. Spoilers! <laughs> so we got an earthen mud brick city. Building styles. This modifies these. Three. Mega structure. Okay. So the key feature is the city as a whole. <sighs> so the entire city is a mud brick structure. I'm imagining that mud brick city that's like built into a cliff face uh, mm. in the Native American one mm -hmm. um, but like under the ground maybe near a lava pool or something that because there's apparently a volcano nearby I didn't roll for one in the geographic features but it's apparently there there's apparently also a reef and apparently there was a snowstorm weather's crazy down here <laughs> global warming uh other options that could have been for building style, just to explain these a bit. Large and imposing buildings, uh, key features being domes and edifices. So these would be like big buildings. Uh, it's kind of hard to describe without going through them all. Uh, then we got an option for small and intimate buildings, like bu building clusters and residences. These would be smaller little dots peppered throughout your map. Like this is, imagine if you're looking down on your map like uh, looking at the layout, uh, if you got large and imposing buildings, you'd have a lot of larger, uh, bigger structures uh, and geometric ones. Uh, mega structure, the entire thing is one solid thing. Small and intimate ones, you'd have you'd be doing a lot of nitpicky stuff. Like, uh, wait, I have a pen here. Um, <laughs> I forgot I have this. Okay, so if you were doing your map, large and imposing buildings. Boah, we got. Big old freaking buildings, Boah, as you build the city map out. But then, if you do uh, the small and intimate buildings, then you'd be like, "Oh, we're doing a lot of little tiny features around here. Got all this stuff." And there might be like a big landmark or something in a plaza, but you largely stay to this as you're like planning out your city. Um, tall and pointed buildings. Uh, this is less so on this map, uh, but the buildings would be tall and pointy, which is actually what I rolled for the front cover of this thing, which is good because it works out for the composition of a 8.5 by 11 cover. Um, but uh, when I did the cover for this, I rolled for mud brick buildings that were very vertically oriented, and I believe it also had a vertical spread when I rolled for the city spread. Um, then we got wide and sprawling buildings. Uh, so that would be like if your buildings are like really big looking, but they they just have they're just they're not so tall and not so big. Like over here, this is like bold. This is like italic. Um, I don't know if you know what I mean. It's sort of just to help you illustrate what your city looks like, not necessarily for the map, but just for your imagination. So anywho, we got earth and mud brick, mega structure, uh, architectural styles. This is the last bit of the architecture, uh, and this is kind of makes it pretty. Artistic, emotional designs, expressionism is an example because I gave real world examples, so you can look them up. So let's just look expressionist architecture. So, uh, this is a simple thing you can look up. Uh, but yeah, these are really weird looking buildings, essentially. I got the fucking weird uh, option. Like, we got what the fuck's going on over there. We got, like, what the fuck's going on over here. Sydney Opera House would be considered expressionist uh, as far as architecture goes. Crumpling up a piece of paper and tossing it on the ground and then designing a building after it, that would be expressionist. The egg. The, the fucking egg. Uh, yeah, just... These are like your, your Mobius buildings. Your, um... Mm, yeah. Your, like... Uh... Fantasy sci-fi buildings, maybe? I don't know. I would, like, Tatooine... Like, Just look at anything in Dubai. Tatooine, kind of, I would say, is kind of expressionist, although the expression that they're expressing is mostly domes. Um, domes. 
sometimes. Uh, but it's very much about just the shape and having that invoke an emotion. So, we got Earth and Mud Brick Megastructure Expressionist is what I'm going to put. Um, other options we got here Art Deco, Cubic Designs and Patterns. Again, you can look up all of these like things on your good old Google to uh, figure out like what these things sort of look like. Rococo is more elaborate, uh, kind of like gothic style. Um, no, Rococo is delicate not, and gentle. Oh, sorry, not gothic, uh, Baroque. Yeah. It's, it's based off of seashells, and gems, and flowers. It's debated that Rococo is also just another form of Baroque. I mean, But we yeah. won't get into that. <laughs> uh, brutalism is another option I have here, which is, again, kind of like Expressionism in that it's focused about the shape, but the shape is mostly big building kill you. Uh, big building just focused on capitalist ventures and uh, communist ideals, whatever. It's just a big imposing building that is primarily for industrial and functional design. Uh, they're not thinking as much about being pleasing to the eye. Um, Bauhaus, minimalism, Baroque, opulent as opposed to elaborate and delicate for Rococo. Uh, that's how I would dis like dis uh, separate those two. <laughs> Art Nouveau, organic designs and patterns that are very like trees and vines and leaves, all that sort of stuff. Art Nouveau is very specific style that you can easily look up. Simple geometric forms like De Style, De Style, uh, German sort of inspired movement that was mostly just like primary colors and big fat squares, big fat circles. Uh, think of, um, as in a difference to expressionism, this is more about flat geometry than about shape, like 3D geometry. Um, futurism, this is like more like Coruscant or maybe the, the buildings of like today, but like using magic to build them from the past or something. In unworked and natural forms, ancient architecture, like Stonehenge. Um, you you plopped bricks together without shaping them into perfect shapes, uh, was kind of what I was trying to describe there. Ugh. That was a lot to go through. Um, but we have what we need, which is earthen mud brick megastructure expressionistic. Uh, next we go to religion. I didn't have a thing for religion because, one, I'm not allowed to use Greyhawk deities, uh, two, because uh, I don't know what religions you have in your setting, um, but they could be Forgotten Realms deities, they could be Egyptian deities, whatever. I'm not going to have you roll for that, but I will roll for one aspect of religion, uh, as well as the tolerance of your city. Uh, now. You don't have to have, like, intolerance in your city, uh, but I think that it creates cultural tension sometimes if you do have some of it. Uh, the weighted option that I have here versus the random, which is totally random, the weighted option favors more tolerant cities because in a world with so many different religions that are so present and you can physically, like, interact with gods at times and get magic from them, places tend to be more tolerant. Like, people don't just go around going, yeah, fuck Pelor, because then the sun will kill you. Um, so let's just roll weighted option. Yeah, we got a totally tolerant city. Makes sense. It's underground. It's well balanced uh, racially and species wise. Filled with genasis. They probably don't care what religion you do. Uh, here I designated uh, totally tolerant by allowing the worship of any and all religions provided it does not interfere with the law. Tolerant is less so where they allow worship worship of many religions, but not the ones they consider evil. So, like, that could mean literally evil, like a cult of Bane or Vecna or something, uh, to just something they consider evil, so they don't allow it. So if they don't like trees, then technically the elf god could be evil? Yeah. Um, intolerant is the city has one religion... Uh, not necessarily just a mono religion, but they have one religion, and it's considered ethically wrong to practice anything else. 
but it's not illegal. Strictly intolerant, become, it becomes illegal to worship anything other than the city's religion. And that's kind of how that works. Uh, it's, it's a scale that uh, does have some variation in there. So, uh, we got a totally tolerant city. Uh, religion. Totes. Tall. Um, Gross. And we got central religion. We have a few options here. Uh, I'll just read through them all at the end, but let's roll right now. Let's do a totally random one. Three. City worships one deity. That's interesting. Maybe it's a deity of dungeons or a deity of fire or something now. Um, one deity. Uh, but the options that we have here are promotes all known religions, city worships a pantheon of deities, so like a specific pantheon. It doesn't need to be like Egyptian, but it could be like they worship these four deities from my setting. Um, like, oh, my city worships Hieronius, Pelor, and Elona, the god of the wilderness. Uh, everybody else exists, but we don't worship them in the city. Um, city worships one deity, which is what we got. City has a religion that treats mortal souls as divine. Uh, so these are where it's getting a little weird. Um, That's not weird. It just sounds like Satanists. Uh, I forget <laughs> what the specific type of religion is, but it's a type of religion is where this kind of devolved. You mean or like diverged. a real life one? Yeah, gotcha. not a specific one, but a type of religion. Like an ideal. Okay, yeah, yeah. For instance, the next one is the city has religion that worships nature totems, uh, which is you would worship the totems that represent nature, uh, like totemism basically uh i think the mortal souls is divine is like research or uh religion uh related to ancestry and whatnot those souls have divinity and that is what is worshipped um next city does not have a central religion fair enough you do you uh city has a unique religious cult um so disparate from the main chief gods. It could be a lesser god, it could be like a devil, it could be an angel, it could be a specific lesser being that they worship, or maybe just some weird thing that they worship. For instance, I rolled that for uh, another city that I did with this. So uh, they actually worship a star called Kaifon, which some of you might know, uh, but I can't say anything because Allie is here and she's Hi. in this campaign. Um, no spoilers, please. I get too many, and then I have to pretend like I don't know things, and then just hide my giggles. Yeah, I brag to Allie a lot about my ideas. I don't know if it's bragging. You just, you, you're really I bad splurge. at keeping secrets unless you tell me. Yes, I need to tell somebody, or else it wells up inside. So another option. City, We're very bad at gift giving. The city has a religion that is a sect of another religion. So if there's uh, two people that worship Hextor, um, but... One believes uh, in the tyranny side of him, but another might believe in the, uh, like, specifically the evil part. Uh, so they're less about the whole ruling over somebody tyrannically and more about just committing murder to commit murder. Um, murder. So there's a specific sect that is divulged or diverged from the main religion. Um, City worships a particular monster or species of monster. Yeah, we worship a dragon here, because we have to. Can you imagine if they worship, like, a, a minotaur? Like, that'd be so cool. <laughs> city worships a particular mortal or group of mortals. That would be like if the city had a pharaoh, uh, or a king that was divinely given right to rule. They would worship that person or group of people. Um, so, yeah. Those are, your, those are all your options. And of course you can always just go with like some other thing that you want, but I provided enough options here that everything is kind of represented. So next we go to cultural values. This is the last part of culture. And you could just roll a 50-50 for each one, uh, which I might do just for sake of speed. But this is... Uh, I found a thing online that uh, sort of came up with ideas of describing cultural values for instance like um how people in the far east are very uh group oriented whereas people in the far west like the u.s 
they're very individual oriented like individual success is more important than the success of the community as a whole uh and that's mm -hmm. like lauded as like oh that person's doing a good job that person makes a lot of money they're doing successful good for them whereas if you were like in china or japan they'd be like oh that person's such a braggart that person like doesn't care about other people because they're hoarding all their wealth all this other stuff i don't know um that's just one generalization but that's kind of what this entails and i won't go through everything because you can just read it by downloading this which i should once again reiterate this entire document is free well it's pay what you want but you can get it for free on the dm's guild it's called noble crumpet city generator if you're just joining us um so i'm just gonna go with 50 50 we'll do evens as first odds as we'll do odds as first for uh, evens as second uh okay second so progress the culture is constantly open to revolutionary change so rather than sticking to tradition they are a-okay with change and in the city summary at the end of this document these are just like little check boxes that you can just circle um, there's also a middle one that just says it's not important so it's not important to the culture so maybe I'll roll a d6 instead but either way uh, so enlightenment and we got I'll roll d6 for now on cooperation so the city's more uh, more cares about cooperating with each other than competing against each other uh, that's more of a an Eastern type of ideal socialism yeah and not necessarily it's just like here like in America we compete with each other and that's seen as a good thing to do yeah. that's how we get things done is we compete with each other and those who succeed go ahead and those that fail fall behind and that's yeah. deserve it of them because they failed uh, whereas cooperation is more nobody gets left behind and all that so yes. we care about co-op cooperation it's like the artist version or at least what we're trying to change the artist market to three so for rights i just rolled a three which is a middle ground on the d6 so individual versus the community uh they don't really have a say uh so no preference for rights uh and that doesn't mean they don't care about rights it's that they don't prefer individual rights versus community rights uh so for instance if there's a debate on that like in the law or something they might have a hard time actually coming to a decision um, if they're talking about like oh do we uh, divert the train tracks to save five people but doom one we don't know god <laughs> then we got they would just be the angels from a good place and nothing would get done uh, order law versus chaos they prefer law uh. Yeah, I'm just Angel. rolling for these ran randomly, so... I know. It might not necessarily be the best way to do it. Uh, morality. I think it's fun. Morality is evil. Huh. Lawful? What? A lawful evil group of fire genasis. So, huh. then, then maybe they're... They're about the collective, and if you can't follow the collective, then you shouldn't be a part of them? I don't know. I also just got diligence, uh, work versus recreation... Uh, so, recreation is more like work is a necessary evil, and uh, work, as far as dil diligence goes, as value, is the culture values hard work and sees recreation as a frivolous pursuit. Um, so, our city cares more about recreation. Uh, we kick it back here in Lawful Evil Fireland. Um, lawful evil fire reef land modesty uh so an eastern culture might be more modest as far as modesty uh but a western culture might be more confident like uh less puritan i guess you mean arrogant it's not necessarily about arrogance but okay. uh here i have it written uh a modest culture would put a heavy weight on being humble and not standing out it's better to be mm -hmm. part of the crowd um confidence would be valuing standing out and displaying your talents to the world uh modesty is seen as weak or shy um 
I roll for this? I didn't roll for this. Rolled another six. So we're confident. We're like weirdly American, but also like have a cooperative bent. Yeah. Honestly, it's... I don't know. Anywho, that's values. I don't want to dwell too much on that because that's very existential. And I've been way too existential this entire time. Government type. I am not going through all these. They're pretty much pulled straight from Wikipedia except for Majocracy, which is the most powerful spellcaster controls the government. But basically, uh, we roll to see what the government is. Starting to get into more fun things. <coughs> Newocracy. The heck is that? I'm about to tell you. Philosophers rule the government and are valued for their wisdom. Oh boy. What? I have not heard of that. It, I've heard of like an oligarchy. It would be like a, a group of individuals that can... We'll get to still, that. Yeah. Um, so, newocracy it was developed by Socrates, I think. Yeah, Because of course it was. Uh, he thought that philosophers should rule. Because they're obviously the best people for the job. Uh, they would get nothing done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they probably wouldn't. We'll figure out how this affects the government later. Uh, yeah. Power center. Now, this is different than the government type. Um, technically, according to Wikipedia, most of these government types that I have rolled for are oligarchies. Um, but... <laughs> I didn't really like that, so I kind of separated them out into power center and government type, because uh, I think it's more creative that way. So three, we got a democracy. Interesting. So we got a democratic new newocracy. So we vote. Nothing will get done. We vote <laughs> for the most philosophical people to rule. Oh my god. Uh, Nothing would get done. <laughs> so democracy defined here, power is exercised by the people or representatives of the people. So these philosophers do represent the people. Ooh, I like it. I like it. So here's okay. my new, here's my new thesis. The city uh, has elemental representatives that each represent their element, but also the philosophy of their element. Okay. Right now, perhaps the fire one is the maybe dominant party. Maybe, maybe it's something to do with what had happened. Like maybe the the storm, like the the blizzard that came through, was another party, and therefore they elected this individual because they thought that they would be strong and would be able to overcome them, and they needed that fiery passion and rage to conquer and bring balance back again. I don't know. I think maybe instead of a hostile takeover. I think maybe they eventually came to an agreement and developed this uh, this sort of government to stop all of the conflict from happening. Okay. And maybe fire isn't necessarily the ruling one. Maybe we'll go back and change the symbol to a different animal. Uh, but for now, we got we got a democracy of elements. Uh, so next we do. And this is, I think, my favorite part. Uh, government temperament and political strife. So we get to roll for how the government's doing at its job and how the people see the government. And then we get to roll for what the people are upset about with the government right now. Because the people are always upset about something in the government. Right. Let's find out what. Uh, D20. We got an 18 for the temperament. Transparent. Okay, these philosophers are a very transparent government, so they are very open with how they do the government, and people see them as transparent. So, I think people kind of trust this government as far as uh, trust goes. Or at least they recognize that everything that they're doing is, is very on the nose. They might not need to trust them or agree with what they're doing, but they at least know what's going on completely. Next, we'll do Political Strife, 16. The people will not listen to the government. So people are upset that people will not listen to the government. So perhaps these philosophers are... They're transparent. They're completely transparent. They're always debating and democratizing, but nothing... The people think of them as like a sham. They are just these figureheads that philosophize out on the stand and 
Nobody cares. Philosophize? Is that even a word? It is, because I'm the DM. Um, oh, oh, okay. Alright. <laughs> so, government won't listen. Wait. Yeah. People will not People listen. People don't to the... listen. I was looking at the wrong one. People, People won't listen. They think it's garbage, and that they're garbage, and they don't like it. Okay. So that's kind of what we got going on here. Now I move on to economics. It's a long document, guys. Um, it's, it's a great value for, for being free, uh, and very helpful. Not gonna lie, yeah. So we got e economic type and production type. These are nuanced, but different. And I won't get into totally how, but basically market economy versus planned economy. Market economy is the United States. Planned economy is more like communism and like they the prices of things are decided by a group of people, probably the government. Uh, mixed is a little of both. Coinless is going back in time. It's just trade values and whatnot. Um, production type uh, is more about what the city does to have an economy. For instance, agrarian is farmland. They farm or produce resources uh, and sell those resources. Industrial uh, is they create products from those resources that are sold by agrarian places. And information is more of an upper class kind of place uh, in which they have enough product and enough resources to trade in information and services. Uh, there's no culture that really is that. It's very rare, but in a fantasy setting, you might trade in information as like your, uh, you trade in magic or something, or uh, education as far as magic goes. That's kind of where that is inspired from. So let's see what this place is. Uh, I'm going to do the weighted options for these. Uh, Okay, what did I get? A one. It's a market economy. Okay, that's fine. Um, economy, it's market. So, the people and the market decide what the prices of things are. It's fine, it's probably like a trade bazaar hub of some sort. Uh, production type, I'm gonna assume it's not an agrarian center. Uh, so I'm gonna do a totally random one and try and ignore ones. Like that. Like that. Okay. Two. Industrial. So we got an industrial market center. Uh, then we got commodities and products. So I have choose 1d4 key commodities and or products for your economy's imports and exports. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. And this kind of will help define like what the biome maybe is um, as well, like what's nearby. So we got two imports and four exports. Okay. Imports. Oop. So let's roll for two of these. So if they're a industrial economy, they probably import commodities. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned that. I probably should have. Well, if they're on top of a dungeon, would the dungeon count as like the import? Like they're going and they're gathering it? No. Mm -hmm. No, this is a city. They have contact with the outside world. Yeah. Um, but either way, twenty-one. We got fabric. So they import fabric. Makes sense to me. Let's roll again. We got 61. Oils. They also import oils. You'd think they might have some of that there. Fire Genasi use it for, like, massages. I guess. Like like the Olaf comic with the hot bitches. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So I only got two imports. So exports, we got four. Uh... Do and we they should probably be products, although they could be commodities. We'll see. Uh, so we got 87 
precious metals. Makes sense if you're going to be underground. Mm-hmm. gonna roll a few. We got four uh, alchemical products. Interesting. Let's roll one more. We got 88 stonework. Okay, so they create stonework in there and then sell it. And let's do one commodity. What was that? 15? Uh, okay. Well, oh, it's on the other. Wait a minute. Y'all seeing that? What'd you do? Uh, looks like some of the text disappeared. What? That's weird. Is it, wait, 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 is it there in your original PDF? Yeah, it was there a second ago. Okay, it's back now. <laughs> mm. Like, it was there a second ago, and now it's gone, but now it's back. Oh, Magic. lost the happy, but the happy's back. Okay, we got 15 there. Uh, dried fruits. They export dried fruits? I don't know. I mean, what kind of fruits you got in a reef dungeon? With volcanoes. I mean, volcanic ash is very fertile. The other option was artwork if it was on the other table. It There was yeah, that all right. cultural art uprising. That one makes sense. All right, so they export precious metals, alchemical stuff, stonework, and artwork. Jewelry, cool, of cool, course. Cool. Uh, so that's that. Uh, and they import fabric and oils. Okay, demand. Uh, so we can roll for demand for each of these. I don't think we need to. Uh, this is mostly like if you have a question uh, for a specific item. like. Uh, but I also have a default of uh, imports being undersupplied and exports being surplus, which affects the price. So if you buy one of their key exports, it's going to cost less here because they have a ton of it and they sell it. Uh, if you buy one of their imports, they don't have as much there. They need to import it from elsewhere, so they're going to increase the price a bit. Uh, but you can have other things. We're not going to do that. Economic status. This is semi-important to find out how they're doing right now. Uh, the This thing is pretty much just weighted. I don't think I had a completely random option. It goes towards being a healthy economy. The only weird one here is a segmented economy, which is like a very high disparity between the poor and the wealthy, like there's no middle class. Um, that's the only weird one in this. Otherwise, it's more just merchant wealth that I have here and then a brief description. Uh, so let's see how the economy's doing these days. 86, thriving. Mm. A thriving economy is doing much better than most economies and will probably be able to maintain itself even when things take a downward turn. There is a fairly stable source of trade and industry, and the merchant wealth is between 25,000 and 100,000 gold pieces, between like the lowliest, lowliest merchant, merchants and the wealthiest ones. Interesting. Uh, so we got a thriving economy. Rising Nito. tides raise all ships until they crash and burn because the dragon comes nearby. Mm. Okay, so that's done. Now we can do some factions. Now I didn't put out like exactly how many factions you want or need. Ideally, there should be more than one. Um, I'm thinking there's going to be like four for the elements. Uh, <clears throat> but let's maybe see. I'll I'll roll for four different factions and just see what I get for now. Um, and each of these are going to have their own things about them as well, as you'll see. So, we got faction types. We won't go through them all, I don't think. Um, yeah, I don't think we really need to go through them all. They're pretty self-explanatory, and I do explain them. So let's roll for the first faction. Three. It's a family faction. So there is a faction that is a large family or just acts like one. For instance, the Mafia. They may work with or hire outsiders, but they largely concern their own interests. A noble house, a Mafia, or a brotherhood are examples. Uh, so we got a family... A f you know, the family faction. Um, 
their sphere of influence is the next thing we want to roll for the faction, uh, which is how much of the city they can influence. And they could influence beyond the city, you see right there. So let's do a d20. Nine. So they can influence the entire city. Uh, faction goals. This is the last part that you roll. Ten. Uh, they perform services. So, fairly standard. Whatever. This. What kind of service? I'm not sure. Hmm. Maybe of the deadly sort? They're definitely not painting pictures. I, I just feel like they're not the, the picture painting type of family. So if they perform services, I wonder... If they perform services, they're probably something like a guild. Because a lot of these guild things are services. So I'm going to roll on the guild thing just to see if maybe that can help elaborate what this group is. In or they're a church. Innkeepers. Oh, okay. So we could say there's a family <laughs> that... It's a hotel chain. <laughs> Keep the light on for you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call them innkeepers for now. I I think that these are a little bit more than innkeepers, or in my mind, they're they're a little bit more than just innkeepers. Just because I said perform services, and your mind went to sex alley. I didn't think of sex. I was thinking of killing people. Oh. <laughs> well, that other, doesn't other say side. anything about me. No. Uh, okay. <laughs> Next faction type is a guild. So we do have a guild. So now we can roll on the guilds thing. Uh, nine. Bakers? Bakers? The Bakers Guild? <laughs> well, how influential I, I, is this Bakers Guild? I don't know. Maybe they make all the cakes for, like, One. The, the nobility or something. Okay, they have influence in a single district. Okay. <laughs> you and I both have, like, relief... That's the reason why it's fun to like do this with someone and just like throw out really random ideas and you go, yeah, yeah, that one could work. Or so, uh -uh. what are the faction's goals? Six to hide from the public eye. <laughs> the Baker's Guild. They operate out of a single district, but nobody knows they exist. Is this like a Banksy Baker's Guild? Do they just like magically make cakes for people? They must have a reason to hide, like, to try Maybe to it's stay hidden. Hiding, like, a secret recipe or something like that? Or I, I don't know really, about that. I think I that know. maybe they aren't allowed to unionize, but they've formed a guild anyway. <laughs> so now the bakers, like, have grouped up to protect themselves. Perhaps they're fixing prices or something. Since the market is supposed to define the prices in this economy, perhaps the bakers are doing something they shouldn't, like insider trading. In the bread mm -hmm. world. How dare they? They're making a lot of dough off of this. Uh, Get out. <laughs> Get out. I live here. Okay, next Ugh. faction. Secret drug ring hidden in the goods is what Jaws said. I was thinking the same thing. Okay, like this is more like it. We got a magic and we got a magic faction. Uh, Spear of influence. Eleven. Uh, the entire city. Okay. Faction goals. This is important. It's a magic guild. Uh, accrue wealth. Okay. The magic guild seeks to accrue wealth. Fair enough. I mean, so does everybody. Uh, I thought you said approve, not accrue. accrue. So I'm just imagining like these mages that walk around to all of these different guilds to make sure that like their money is like pure in a sense. The last one that I rolled for is a merchant's faction. Uh, Sphere of Influence, 16, ooh, they can affect multiple cities. Uh, they're merchants, I hope so. Well, it's this faction, it would be like if, uh, uh, I, I don't even have, like, a reference, if the Neverwinter, like, um... It's like if China stopped like exporting things to everywhere in the world well there's also countrywide and worldwide as far as influence goes oh my God. but this faction operates and influences multiple cities it could change prices here and it'll affect another city um 
as opposed to this one. I mean, didn't this thing have two embargoes in the beginning? You're kinda right. Make... <laughs> kinda I forgot makes sense. about that. Oh my god, read your notes. Their faction goal is to collaborate creatively. It's more like a it's more like a group of artists, I think, or like uh professionists professionals. Uh like masons might collaborate creatively. I'm gonna re-roll that one. Merchants are not I, collaborating um, creatively. Well, no, because if they're collaborating creatively, they could be there. It, it's kind of like uh, the mafia in a sense, where they're dictating what is more valuable, so that way they can move around product, right? Oh no, the bread's not selling. All right, well let's stop having other people being able to make bread in different cities. Then they'll want to buy our bread. Mm. There's also. I know it's a thing. I've heard of it before, where. A, a group of individuals can dictate what is popular and what is necessary by literally holding it back, it's like, like like an embargo. Yeah, that that is called insider trading, um, or not insider oh. trading. It's uh, I just did a thing at, at work for this. I I know what you're talking <laughs> about. I I don't know the words, but I know what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah, I just went through training for this, and I a fat lot of good that did. Uh, I know it's illegal. <laughs> I think it's called insider trading. It might be. Uh, so, maybe we'll stick with this, but also because uh, the city has an art movement, so perhaps uh, on the outside they are seeking to... Uh, so there are merchants' guilds that maybe sells artwork and creative stuff. Since we have stonework, artwork, and precious metals, as exports perhaps these merchants are more interested in changing the tides of styles and whatnot and dictating what's in kind of like what uh, you said uh, fashion the merchant fashion industry okay all right so i'm curious and i don't know if you have something for this in your pdf later on so especially for this city the way we're talking about it they sound very wealthy they sound like they have not only an amazing abundance of materials at hand and they're able to work it and sell it and trade it. How are they protecting all of this? It's in a dungeon. It protects itself. I think, yeah. We'll, we'll probably figure that out. Maybe but it's the either way, thing, I don't know. it is a thriving city. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and there's all this merchant work going on here. It's not an agrarian society, it's an industrial one, so they're mm -hmm. definitely exporting stuff, worked goods. But there's not too much of this document left, so let's try and get through it. Um, fun. Now what you can do with these factions is you could like name them and then go back to that symbols thing where the city symbol uh, I rolled for was and create symbols for these factions as well. So you can use this document in different ways. Um, for instance, like how I used this guild's roller to find merchants earlier. Um, but the next, and I believe the last thing, is city districts. So we got a grid city. Um, how many districts do we want in this place? It's a small town, so it's probably not huge. Um, there's four factions, so they need space to work around. Let's do six districts, I guess. Mm -hmm. Waterdeep has like, how many districts does Waterdeep have? It has like eight or something. So maybe like five districts. Let's do five districts. Okay, so, I will, I will, I agree. Five districts sounds good. Cannot control this. Okay. <laughs> I was just talking out loud, dear. So, district type. D100. Where's that? 76. Residential lower class. So some of these are less interesting districts, which is why I kind of want to do maybe more than five, even though I was adamant about five a second ago. Uh, but we got lower class resident residences um, so once we do the district type uh, and I'm gonna move on to, to each of these in turn so we got a landmark now 
this is semi-important because it helps make the district unique. Um, you roll for a landmark that centers yourself in that district. Once you see that landmark, you know you're in this district. Um, and it could be a lot of stuff. But let's find out what this lower re lower class residence has. Uh, 45. Monument to a historical event. Well, it's a good thing I rolled for extra historical events, because there wouldn't have been any. Uh, so it has monument to historical event. So what could that be? Could it be the volcano, maybe? Um, maybe the evil overlord? We can do the evil overlord. Hmm. It's a lower class district. They need to be kept down. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh, that Ugh, it hurts. Uh, district names. So this is sort of weird. We have this, which is district name modifiers. This is just a bunch of, this is a word bank, like, to help you create more interesting names than the, like, merchant's quarter. It doesn't need to be quarter all the time, or, uh, whatever. We'll, we'll get to that. But we also append that to the name origin, which is more vague. Uh, so the D20 sort of uh, is heavily weighted towards the district type, where the district is named after what the district is, just because it's more common to do that, uh, but doesn't necessarily have to be. Let's try it out. Okay, we've got district type, so it's a lower class residence. Let's see what the name modifier is, see if we can get something interesting out of it. The 82. Uh, spires. Interesting. So, we got the... We could call it the Lower Spires, since it's a mega structure. I, I was going to say, isn't this thing pointy and tall anyway? So it's kind of neat. So, the Lower Spires District is a lower class residence with a monument to the evil overlord that once controlled this place. So automatically we have a district. <laughs> it was pretty quick and astonishing how quickly that grew from just these few rolls. So let's do another district. Look at how well it worked. It worked so well. That's why I wanted to do this, and because I needed to do it anyway. Although it's slower because I have to explain some stuff. I still wish that you like printed out a couple pieces of the paper so that way I can like make some of these on my own because it just looks. Print fun. some out at work. Yay! We got an entertainment district, folks. Yes. Okay, landmark. <clears throat> What's so entertaining? Eighty-seven. Statue of an important figure. Hmm. Well, we had the evil overlord there. Maybe we could make that to a different thing and have a... Uh, no, we can we can do a different one here. Well, I wonder if, like, if, if it's going to keep saying, like, statue. Maybe it's, like, these people really worship the individuals, or they, I don't know, like, giving, like, homage to them to some degree. And that's the reason why there's so many statues. I don't know. Well, Thought. if we had created some NPCs earlier... Mm -hmm. Like, we could use one of them. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to say maybe it's a statue of the... Um, maybe the one of the city's founders or something. Which was probably a genie, since we've, we're going with that. Mm -hmm. uh, statue of city founder, who is also a genie. <laughs> uh, no S. There we go. Uh, okay, district names. D20. Nine. It's an animal. Uh, and what's the modifier? 74. Ruin. So, an animal ruin. Um, like a den of something? What do you mean by animal ruin? Uh, well, the modifier is just the word ruin. But an oh. animal could be anything. Okay. Um... So, we could do... Uh, Boxes or tricksters? And entertaining. <laughs> Box is the example I used for the for the example <laughs> next to it. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, well, I guess that's out. Hmm. Man, archetypes. I know. I don't know, John, you've been with us. Is there is there one that you have an idea for? 
could use a snake. Depends on what type of entertainment. Huh. Yeah, it does. At the city founder, it's an entertainment. It's apparently also a bit of a ruin. Um, but maybe it's more of a metaphorical ruin. It's an entertainment district. Um, yeah, it could be like a theater type thing. Theatrical animals. It's not a panda. Not a panda. <laughs> they don't do anything. They're still entertaining, but only because they're cute and fuzzy and don't yes, do anything. But like they they can't function. <laughs> Oh, you know what? Cat. The city's in a reef. Let's oh. make the reef be ruined and call it... Eel. Okay. Um, Re really? Eel ruins. <laughs> eh, doesn't, I was, that I'm doesn't roll of, off the tongue very well. No, it doesn't. And I was trying to think of something that could like be almost like a pun in itself. Fish are all named after things, huh? We we'll have to think of like fish, like coral or urchin. Urchin ruin, like like an urchin, like a, a person who doesn't like hanging out with people. Yeah, I like it. Although once again, it's hard to roll off the tongue, I but I like that. I'm just pun. giving you examples of just like things like that, where it's like there's a meaning, but it's a double meaning. I don't know. Coral are animals, right? Coral are animals. Let's do the is... coral ruins. Instead that of coral reef. Sad. <laughs> it's like real life. Uh. Okay, let's move on to the next district. Uh. Okay. 27. Food market. So we got a food market. As opposed to like a, a different type of market. Uh, okay. So what's here? got 60 prominent government building in the food market I mean they all go to lunch there that's like the perfect spot it's like Boston well you know the government is very transparent they probably hang out in cafes and talk about their philosophies yeah they probably just talk with the <laughs> proletariat and people buying food and they're just like hey we're doing a debate you want to come see the debate so we'll say it's a uh uh, an open forum for a debate. I wonder why the people hate them. I already hate them. I don't even know them. 18. Uh, the district is named for a landmark, uh, which the landmark here is this open forum. So let's roll the modifier. 94. Vault. The... I like vault. But it's the something vault, or the vault of something. The open vault. Yeah, I mean, mm. the uh, they're they're not very closed about these things, so an open vault is fairly transparent, or the glass vault. But that seems a little, I don't know, on the nose. The vault of the forum? I don't know. It sounds important. <laughs> Perhaps this whole marketplace takes place in another building of the megastructure. And then within that building is this open forum. Hmm. So it's the vault that contains the market, which contains the forum. The vault of the forum. It sounds cool. I'm sticking with it. All right. Uh, next district type. We got 11. Educational campus. Interesting. Probably for the Mages Guild. They'd probably be here. Uh... Landmark, 87. It's another statue of an important figure. Uh, let's do a different one, please. That's a lot. These people like their statues. Public art. Okay, it doesn't have to be a statue. But it's still art. But I want... <laughs> I, man, this, this place is an art place, huh? Yeah. It makes sense. So, I guess I'm fine with that. Uh, I feel like they, like, knocked down all of these statues at one point in time and rebuilt them up. I'm feeling like if this is going to be the magic place, like I've said, it's probably going to be, like, 
art that represents the elements of magic or something. Or spe specifically the elemental uh, energies of magic, like fire, water, ice, yeah. all that stuff. So maybe it's a... Magic card. Uh, <laughs> maybe it's a... What's that thing called? What? An orrery. Oh. Yeah. Of the planes. And it's just a constantly shifting and moving. Yeah, and it moves yeah. and stuff. That's that's cool. Okay, what's this place named after? Eight. Okay, so it's just named after the type. It's an educational place. Uh, ninety-eight. Way. <laughs> so uh. Mage's way. Yeah, Mage's way. It is a mage place. We don't need to have, like, super complicated names for everything. No. We've got the Lower Spires, Mage's Way, Vault of the Forum, and the Coral Ruins. They still sound, like, I think all of them sound fairly, like, close or consistent, other than uh, the Coral Ruin. Yeah. It's, like, the only one kind of, like, hmm, all right, cool. Little, we, little out we there. We can re-roll that if it's weird, but yeah, it's fine. even if there's just one weird one. Yeah. So for a fifth district, this should be the last one, since I only wanted to do five. 33, we got government. We just did that one. I'm going to re-roll that. 31, fortification. Okay, here you go. You were asking how they defended this place. I, I was, yeah. Because it just didn't make, I don't know. It was just like that last little piece that I kept wondering about. Like, why would you have such an amazing, you know, you can't have a bank without hard, strong doors and a vault. Well, this is cool. So the district's landmark is a bridge. So it's a fortification on a bridge. This is super cool. I like this. This is like the like fly you so, fools sort of situation. So well well it's also it's a reef, right? On an island? Or did you reroll no, that? No, that's not on an island. Okay, okay. So it's just a reef. But maybe it's the bridge and the whole city is a structure over like this reef. Could be. I'll have to like figure out map wise. Hmm. Um, district name: seventeen humanoid species. Interesting. So it could be named after the Genasi. Uh, what's the district name modifier? Eighty-four. Strand. The Genasi Strand. Maybe the Genie Strand. Jin Strand. Mm. Mm. Maybe I'll reroll the modifier because that's less important. But I like Strand though. Cause I like Strand. Strand, strand seems like something that could connect, sanctuary. or a fragile point that could disconnect. Hold, Genasi Hold. Elemental Hold. Hmm. Genasi hold kind of works, even though I liked Strand. Um, it is a fortification, so there's probably a fortification at one side of this bridge. So we'll call it Genasi hold. Boo. Fortified bridge. Prob. Prob. Boy, it's getting late. <laughs> probably near entrance. Okay, this is our city. Brief summary. Okay, it's a dungeon in a coral reef, probably below the surface. Um, it's integrated with the dungeon. It's a circular spread with a grid formation, probably because of the dungeonness. It expands downward, going deeper and deeper into this pit. So I'm probably ooh, mm, interesting. I am kind of imagining it like Maiden Abyss now. Um, <laughs> small town, mostly Genasi but also a bunch of odd types like dragonborn, tieflings, dwarves, and also a small percent of half-elves, which makes sense because Alore is nearby, which is a half-elf city for my setting. Uh, we didn't do any of the people yet, but there are some shopkeepers that we rolled for, a, a chandler, a carpenter, a paper seller, a furniture maker, and a metal worker. I'm sending you a doodle soon of like how I sort of imagine like this city to some degree. Uh, the city is been very uh, interesting. We kind of did a history before it became a city, 
because uh, it's a very young city. Uh, but I wanted to roll for history. So they established trade, had a cultural revolution, the city embargoed another city, then an evil overlord took over the city, then they embargoed another city, or perhaps again, um, and then there was a snowstorm, then a volcano erupted, and then the city invaded another city. So I'm thinking that they probably, there were like genies beneath the earth vying for this dungeon of territory um, before the city became independent and based on what we rolled for government these elementals uh, now have think a council of philosophers that think too much the symbol is an orange fire snake not too sh I'm not sold on that at mm. this point because uh, at first we were like oh the fire people won but maybe not so much anymore uh, since they're ruled by philosophers maybe um, I think it was just someone who was like appointed just for like the role and because it's a democratic philosoph philosophical uh, government so people are like oh yeah you know that makes sense gotta gotta create like a balance or something perhaps the symbol is um, an elemental is a monster perhaps it's an elemental and perhaps we just don't care about the color and have it just be a, a bit of every color for its symbol uh, and this symbol could appear in physical elemental form like uh, like they could put it on a wall and it's like uh, created by a mage and it's like animated water and fire and earth and air all combined in one um, and that would be a stupid looking logo huh um, probably look better as a logo so let's just call it, uh, maybe we'll stick with the snake. We'll call it an elemental snake. Snake. Um, maybe it's eating its own tail, Ouroboros style, so. Boring. I don't know. Makes it look nice. It's a circular city anyway. I think having something with a circle motif, yes. So it would be like all of the elements, like, Kind of like the, um, the, wow, the orrery? All the things kind of like moving around itself. Yeah. I I'm imagining very Gallifreyan kind of like imagery. Anywho, they speak common, but it's a dialect, so it's a bit hard to understand them. <laughs> Their food is sweet desserts. God, these decadent people. <laughs> uh, they have, They're all going to have diabetes. They wear elaborate pectorals with less sort of clothing that we sort of decided because they're all genasi they show off their striations the architecture is an earthen mud brick megastructure with expressionistic looking buildings which makes sense honestly for genies uh, working all of this earth underground um, the religion it's totally tolerant uh, they worship one deity who is probably a uh, deity of either elements or uh, dungeons um, figure that out later. Values, they value enlightenment uh, over tradition, cooperation over uh, competition. They don't really have a preference for individual or um, community rights. They're lawful evil uh, as a city. They care about recreation versus uh, hard labor, and they're confident versus shy. It sounds like P-Town. It sounds like it sounds like P-Town. It sounds like the City of Brass is kind of a What's the City of Brass? It's a fire elemental city on the elemental plane of fire. Oh, okay. Uh, Ifritis live there. But they're gotcha. kind of lawful evil, I think. Um, but it's very brazen and very rich and mercantile, and they trade with a whole bunch of people. But it's like a different version of the City of Brass is what I'm kind of getting. Um government is a democratic newocracy uh, where philosophers rule. We've decided that it's philosophers based on the elements. Uh, it's very transparent. They have an open forum, as we now know. Uh, the current strife is that the people won't listen to the government. The government is very weak. Um, it's a market economy driven by the market. They sell secondary goods. They're an industrial district uh, or city. They have a thriving economy. It's, it's doing really well for itself. They import fabric and oil, they export precious metals, alchemical products, stonework, and artwork. 
the factions, there's a family faction that encompasses the entire city. They perform services. Uh, we decided they're innkeepers. So they probably treat uh, people right coming to the city to trade. Um, services. Air there is a baker's guild that is trying to hide from the public, and they operate out of a single district, probably in opposition to the merchant's guild, which is so big it can affect multiple cities, and they're art centric uh they collaborate creatively um the there is also a fourth faction a magic faction that encompasses the entire city and they seek to only accrue wealth so perhaps they come into uh bat uh heads with the merchants guild since the merchants value artwork and the magicians value wealth that's an interesting thing that i didn't really think about until now um then we have five districts uh, let's put this one up top because it seems to be the one that's going to be in front of everything. We got Genasi Hold, which is a fortified bridge district that is probably near the entrance as you go into this dungeon reef city. Uh, the lower spires is where the lower class residences are, probably deepest in this dungeon that expands downward. Uh, the Coral Ruins, which is an entertainment district uh, with a statue of the city founder there, who is also a genie. Uh, the Lower Spires also has a monument to the evil overlord that took over the city at one point. We don't really know much about that yet. Uh, there's the Vault of the Forum, which is a food market with a prominent open forum where the philosophers, the democratically elected nuocracers, um, debate philosophically and are positively insufferable in the middle of the food market. The last district is Mage's Way, which is an educational place. Uh, with an Ori of the Plains as its landmark. I feel like this place just wants to be taken over. <laughs> this place, like, this like place sounds like adventures go there and go, huh, what if we took this <laughs> <Yes>. over? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, oh, this could be ours? But then what? again, if there's a huge magic presence and whatnot, and th if the philosophical leaders, they might be Genasi, but they could be straight-up genies, uh, which uh, is not you don't, yeah, you don't, I have you don't not put that past uh, myself, but the elemental genies do at times butt heads with each other, but they're also very vain. They could be the insufferable leaders of this city, and I kind of like that. I think that this city is ruled by genies. Whew. I didn't really draw anything today. Do you want to? Do you want to <laughs> see the doodle I just did in the past like two minutes while you were talking? Sure. I'm gonna copy paste it over to your Facebook so you can just like copy paste it into your thing. Success. And then I have to go and doodle a cool idea that John came up with. Yeah, I, I'm just reading that um, a bit. I also kind of want to doodle. Even though I haven't been doodling this whole time because I've been rolling nope. dice. Nope. Your little brain baby has not been doodled out. But I like what we've come up with with this. Uh, I think it's cool this city generator and you can kind of see how this thing works so uh and it, of course there's this handy guide at the end for people that do download this document and have a printer and can print this out um we also have a history timeline for if you do have a thriving history We've got spaces for five districts and spaces for five factions here as well um where did you send the thing to if you in did? the facebook facebook's I don't want to show... Well, I can do it on the you dice. You just right. copy-paste it and then put it onto your thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. That was a quick sketch, huh? Yeah. So I imagine that this, it's kind of like Loch Ness, where there's like an island in the center of this giant lake. Like it might not just be, um, like it might have been a flooded area and it had dried up to the point where we could see the reef underneath, like spawning up um, like an island, which would be that idea um, in a sense. And then this gaping hole in the center is being 
built up on top of like there's a city that's built into the hole itself which is where like the uh lower spire is it's underneath the bridge platform and then it grows down i do like this idea of it being a city that's suspended in the center and expands downward and then there's like a thing around it like made in abyss um that is kind of what i had envisioned uh though at times i had envisioned that there was just like big cliff face with like buildings in it whatever um but i didn't really have uh a, a total vision for that but you've definitely done something more interesting i just kind of puked on the screen well uh also uh you're right i didn't drop a link to my thing ha ha yeah it's okay I know you're bad at marketing. I feel like... Wait, no. I feel like I'm your Ellie. I do one. Like, to your Frank Frazetta, to some degree. I'm better at, like, promoting you. Although I really wish you were an Ellie for me sometimes, too. Okay. So this is the place. Uh, I'll drop the link in chat. Uh, yeah, it, okay. it is on my Twitter, and it is on uh, my Tumblr. And it is, like, everywhere I've been posting. Um, let me just go to the Twitter and... Or the, the Twitch. And then put the link... Uh, I don't know. I can't really put it in the the actual Twitch chat right now. Uh, no, I think... You, you can't be live to edit your panels. If I yeah, correctly. that's true. Or at least that's what I thought. I don't know if they've changed that. I'm not going to try it. But either way, I dropped it in the chat. Um, so you can find it there. Uh, I did say it was free, but it's pay what you want. Um, so you can pay if you want. If you liked it, you can definitely drop a few cents, a few bucks, whatever. But if you can't or don't want to, it's also free. So you can definitely try it out. And you can always rebuy it later if you want to. Uh, if you or liked it and wanted Patreon. to support it. You can also support me on Patreon, which I do have one. Um, I, I don't know what the future of that's going to be if this DMs Guild stuff works out. Uh, it'll probably be something different than it is right now. Uh, but I don't intend to get rid of the Patreon completely. Or if, if I do do more DMs Guild stuff, I will do less Patreon stuff, but it will be a different sort of Patreon thing. For instance, or you just have it available for free on your Patreon? No, I can't do that if it's on oh. the DMs Guild. That's the main rub with the DMs Guild and why I wanted to like uh, test, it. test it. Because what I think I can do for the DMs Guild uh, versus Patreon is I think that since I own the artwork that's on the DMs Guild, technically, because um, I read through that, I could post artwork on the Patreon. So I could change the Patreon into primarily being uh, the occasional sprinkle of uh, one page homebrew stuff. Because I probably wouldn't put like um, that portal mage that I put on uh, Tumblr a while ago. Mm -hmm. That was only like two pages. It was just one new subclass. I probably wouldn't put that on the DMs Guild. That I feel is more like just a, a wave of the hand. I, that I magically created. Um, that'll probably go on Patreon, be on Tumblr, go viral, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, the stuff that would be on Patreon would be dungeon stuff and map stuff. Because those are images that I would put on my documents. So if I put those images that I own, Wizards doesn't own those, and people don't have a license to use those images, I do. So I can put those on Patreon and nobody can be mad at me. So that's my idea if this works. Her. I win. Her. Also, I see you, John. Uh, you made a supplement on the DMs Guild called Expanded Genasi. So that's interesting. 12 new Genasi featuring elemental mixes, negative and positive. Yep. Um, so that is always interesting. I've always liked those things and I hate just using generic 
the four generic Genasi. Uh, that's why I have a smoke Genasi yeah. in my campaign, and I have currently in my... Uh, it's the same campaign, but currently they have a mud Genasi with them. Oh yeah, Ostrich. Yeah, Ostrich is a they mud They are really Genasi. cool. I like them. Um, but yeah, I, I like non-standard Genasi, so I might have to check that out. Um... <laughs> Uh, thanks, thanks, John. I will have to look at that. Um, you... Do you have a? Oh, you're you're mobile. I was gonna say if you have a link, you can probably drop it in because I don't I don't think Chris shuts down his links you... like I do. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I shut them down or not, but uh, especially since I, just... I, I think you've been posting in it, so I don't I, think I have. Yeah, you're fine. I mean, when you get like if you have bigger people or like more people on, it gets a little bit harder to manage. But like most of the time, even when I've streamed and I have like, I don't know, I think I've had max like 20 people. I'm just like, all right, you know, just ask before you post. That's all. That way I'm like ready for the trolls or the memes. Yeah. Um, but anywho, you can send that to my Tumblr if you'd like. Cause I know that you're on there. You can just DM me the link. Excuse me. Uh, but yeah. Uh, it's getting late, um, so I uh, think in finish my cool doodle. I know oh. you did your cool doodle, and I wanted to doodle as well, but I was too busy uh, commentating uh, on all this. Commentating? Yeah, I thought that I was going to be drawing as I go, but I really can't, especially when I'm like rolling and making decisions, and I kind of need to go through the entire thing to get a vision of what the city is. Y yeah. Which that was that was a big see. thing. Is like it, it took a bit for even me to like start seeing some things. It was only at like the very end that I was like, oh, oh all right, that's kind of cool. Why can't I delete this symmetry? There we go. So I guess lastly to cut this off, what should we name our city? That's one thing that's not in the city generator. Aww. Um. Sap. <laughs> it it should. I don't want it to be like a just a name like we've been naming the districts. Um. So, non-standard, uh, Genasi, I, I don't, I don't mean to be like... What's like a Genasi kind of like thing? I was gonna say, I don't mean to be racist, but, uh, they, the genies... Don't, don't diet racist. Yeah. <laughs> Not to be racist, but... No, don't be... Yeah, don't do that. Just, what are you trying to say? Uh, genies in the D&D universe have Arabic names with oh. a ton of apostrophes in them. That's not racist. That's just pointing out what you see. Don't diet racist for that reason. Genies are from 101 Arabian Nights, are they not? Uh, the term genie, if I remember correctly, actually comes from the word jinn. Jin is an evil spirit which is so associated with the Quran. Um, they are malicious and evil creatures that uh, you are to avoid at all costs because they will bring you harm. Yeah. Yeah. But but so those are related probably because they are in the Quran. But so do genies need to have Arabic sounding names because they're from the Quran? I think they're associated with more um like middle eastern sounding like cultural names just because of that i don't think they need to have names like that yeah honestly that's, i think Arab that's names why are really i was cool. saying like i don't know if i want to prescribe to that yeah just, i don't know ascribe to that um for instance i just randomly have hand waved that alorans in my setting have French sounding names, but also mixed with elven names from Xanathar's Guide. But that's because that's the story you're trying to create. So, I mean, if the story you're trying to create now has that type of feel, then sure. If not, you can just make up your own nonsense. Like, maybe they sound German. <laughs> <laughs> or they could sound Cambodian. Let's. Honestly, like. Just throwing it out there, Vietnamese names are, are gorgeous and probably would work for something like this. I do not Especially... know any Vietnamese names. Uh, hold on. Mm. They're very, like, sing-songy. Like, I mean, like most Eastern uh, cultures, there's definitely, like, accents and in inflections within the 
within their language, which relates to the names as well. But um, I'm just gonna butcher all of these probably. Wang Sai Huang. Something like that, or Mao Dong Fu. This is one Wait. name that I always forget how to pronounce. N G U Y E N. Uh oh crap. Oh Win. god. Is it Win? No. Nigi no. Uh wow. There was like three people. <laughs> Actually. That name is pronounced differently depending on where you are from, if I remember correctly. There there was like three people that I had Win. class with who had that last name. And some of them pronounced the G and some of them Win. did not. Sounds like, like, like some of them pronounce it Niguyan. Some of them pronounced it uh, Nguyen. Like there's just no G. And I, th I think there was another one. Well, huh. uh, I just went to pronunciation, and it's Gwyn. All right. Alternatively, it's a Vietnamese name. Uh, well, that doesn't tell me how to pronounce it. Just tells me it's. Hold on, hold on. I'm looking. I'm listening to a YouTube channel. Whoa! This is this is a rabbit hole I didn't want to go down. Okay. Um. Ween. Let's call it Famlandan. Huh? Let's call it Famlandan because that's how I'm pronouncing this random one that I picked. I mean, I really like the sound of that. It sounds really cool. Also, it's Nguyen. Let's add an H at the end. How to you make pronounce it cool. that that surname. What? Nguyen. Nguyen? Mm -hmm. Well, I heard Gwen. Nope. Well, either way. I just listened to a Vietnamese man just say it to me. He's I just also like, that's did. all I'm teaching you. <laughs> okay, so then I guess it's I was right. Like, based off of friends. Either who. Pronounce it differently. <laughs> Either who. We've gone on a tangent. We've yeah. come back. You can download my city generator from the DMs Guild. Drop the link in the chat. Um, if you're watching this, you can... Or re-watching this, you can get it from the chat. If not, find me on Tumblr. Find me on Twitter at Noble Crumpet. Uh, on Twitter. On Tumblr, it's Noble Crumpet hyphen Dorkvision. Find it there, too. But the links will go to the DMs Guild, where you can pay what you want to get the city generator yourself. Uh, for now, welcome to Famla Dan, uh, our elemental genie run newocracy dungeon city. Pamalam. <laughs> oh, Black Betty. Family. Yes. Famla Dan. <laughs> <sighs> That's it. Sign off. Gone. <laughs> Good night, everyone, and I will see you guys this weekend uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the continuation of the Dork Vision campaign, uh, where they are continuing their trip through the Underdark. They probably won't come across this city for a while, because I'm trying to populate the surface world uh, with cities for their return from this trek. But you can join them as they search for a wizard, Venom Canyon. Uh, see you then. And have a good one. Good night, everyone. Bye.